<laughs> hey muchachos, happy Dia de los Muertos. Hope you're ready for some Grim Fandango. What? What? What do you mean we're not doing Grim Fandango? I'm dressed up and everything. I've got the tux on. I don't know what you're playing at. I'm not going to deal with it. Well, we were going to do Grim Fandango, but I guess we can settle for some seasonal Mega Drive games, starting with Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Zombies Ate My Neighbors, or Zombies as it was known in Europe, which seems silly as the former is a great title, was released in the Mega Drive and SNES in 1993 by Konami. That was in the days before they shifted their focus. Now they're doing really well. You play as Zeke or Julie trying to rescue their neighbors from a variety of monsters. It can be played with one or two players, though the co-op play is always more fun. The neighbors range from babies to barbecue chefs, teachers and tourists, and if a monster touches them, they're dead. Once the neighbors are all rescued, or dead, you can progress on to the next level as long as you've saved one of them. There are a good variety of different levels including back gardens, shopping malls, pyramids and more. Add to that a range of interesting weapons and power-ups, and it makes for a pretty fun experience that holds up well today. Now onto something a bit more horrifying, Splatterhouse 3. Splatterhouse 3 is the third installment in the series and was released for the Mega Drive in 1993 by Namco in the US and Japan. Unfortunately, Europe didn't get a release. The intro is insanely long and drawn out, but it does a good job on the creepiness front. The use of digitized images works well too here. The story follows the protagonist, Rick, who has a turbulent relationship with an ancient evil object, the Terror Mask. Your wife and son have been kidnapped by the evil one, and it's up to you with the help of the mask to rescue them. If you wonder aimlessly, now we're getting philosophical advice from a bloody mask. To Cat's dream, do they really have nine lives? Is none of will be the fear of the number nine? Was the number 23 really as terrible a film as everybody said? Hmm. Oh, wander. That makes more sense. Yes, this is a less linear type of beat-em-up. You've got the freedom to traverse a map as you see fit, opening doors and choosing your path as you go. The levels are timed and running out of time can have pretty serious consequences. This is a pretty brutal game. The ability to use weapons is great and makes fighting these abominations that bit more satisfying. You can pick up Eldritch Orbs too, which fill up the power meter. Once it's full, Rick can transform into a beastly version of himself. It's pretty useful for blasting through the levels. Now that's a bit harsh. I know she's had some body odor issues and all, but a little bit of deodorant can solve a- uh, uh, oh, oh. That's not so good. And one of the most famous features of the series is the gore, and there's plenty on show here. The monsters get ripped apart as they're injured. I guess Jennifer's dead. We'll leave that there for the time being, but I would like to come back to Splatterhouse. Now for uh, the next game's not a horror game, but it's fairly dark all the same. Time for some 90s movie nostalgia with plenty of lightning and thunder. Everything scary has lightning. Something has survived, and it's this abomination. The Lost World. No, this wasn't the game I wanted to look at. This is more like it. Yes, it's the Jurassic Park game released in 1993. It's a side-scrolling platformer and you can play as Grant or a Raptor. It's a lot darker and grittier than you might expect for a Jurassic Park game, and it's definitely a tough one. I spent most of my time flying off the edges of the map or getting impaled on things. It is quite funny using the tranquilizer dart on pterodactyls though. It's another game I'm going to have to look at in more detail, but in this video we're just flying through and getting the first impressions. Well that's enough of dinosaurs. How about we tackle some good old fashioned xenomorphs? Another 1993 release. Alien 3 was based off the film of the same name. Wait, Alien 7? That's not right. Oh, Alien 3. Ellen Ripley has to make her way through the Fiorina 161 prison colony, saving prisoners, killing aliens, and completing other tasks. There are a lot of weapons to choose from, which is nice, and necessary at times. There's a motion track at the top of the screen which shows you when aliens are nearby. Unless you have near godlike reflexes, it's gonna be pretty useless. The levels are quite large and sprawling, so you've gotta keep in mind where you've been already. 
This wouldn't really be a problem, but there's a timer which I'm not a huge fan of. You have to complete your objectives before the time runs out. You know, I'd rather take my time and not feel artificially pressured into rushing through levels. And the closer you get to the goal, the more dickish the game becomes. It sends more and more aliens that shouldn't have been able to spawn in the locations available. I'm so close, almost there. Just one more guy to go in. Damn. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this whistle stop tour through some Halloween appropriate Mega Drive games. And I think we can all agree that. What? What's that noise? No. No, I said horror games. But that's true terror. No! No! No!